Happy Palm hey, Sunday. Hey, Happy Palm Sunday. Hi, hey, I like a uh, Arlisa. I like your palms. Yeah, around palm you. Sunday. I yeah. <laughs> How do you make like the screen smaller? Sunday. Anybody know? Uh, uh, what? Make the screen smaller. My screen is big. I mean, it's Ooh, all over the place. Change. She want to change uh, your view. I want, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to go in there messing with that, Miss Joe. <laughs> you have, probably have to go to your settings. If you go to your settings, then you can change the display, but you might mess up, mess up, though. You might want I know, right? Because I don't even know how I ended up with the screen this big. Because <laughs> when it started out, you all was over, up top. Now you're on the side. I don't know. Oh, you got <laughs> the view. Yeah, the more people that's coming on, it depends on how your view is set up. You probably um, have the gallery view or the full screen. You can exit. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking off of is the full screen. But yeah, he, I don't see it, anything down here where you do it at. You see a button that says escape, ESC. Uh uh, I see. Uh, it should be oh, on the top on the, left. On the, uh, it should be yeah, on the top yeah. left. Hit escape, and you might be able to exit out of the full screen. No, I see reaction, record, share screen, chat, and participants. No, you're and looking at the actual. Video. No, it's on your keyboard. Oh, okay. It's on your keyboard. It should say ESC. Oh, okay. Um, let me find it. At the top, top left. If you hit escape, it should take you out. We have one more minute before the session okay. starts. Okay. Alika, you look like you in the islands, baby. I that's what I was. <laughs> but it's supposed to be Palm <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> it's beautiful. It is. But she got an island on. Mm -hmm. This is my Easter dress from three years ago. <laughs> Okay. Okay, I found it. Good, okay. Did that help? Yeah, but then it made the, okay, it's back. Double click to escape full screen. Let me make sure I'm, uh, I've exited out of here. Okay. All right, y'all, we're about ready to get started. Okay. It is now 11 o'clock. We thank you for coming in. Um, today is, oh, I didn't want to do that. Today is our first Sunday of the Passover. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Passover Sunday. We thank you all for coming out today. Our teaching facilitator is our own minister, Patricia Bush Wilson. And I turn it over to her. Minister Wilson, it's all you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kelly. I appreciate you. I uh, want to open up a prayer. Ask one of our uh, ministers, uh, Reverend, Reverend um, Evans Jackson, going to lead us in prayer. And then we'll get started uh, with our lesson for uh, this Palm Sunday. <coughs> Reverend Jackson. Let's take attitude of prayer. Dear kind Heavenly Father, we come before you, O Heavenly Father, not to grumble or complain, but to exalt your holy name. You've been good to us, O Heavenly Father. From our early existence to our present time, we, you've only been good. We pray, O Heavenly Father, for this Sunday school lesson, O Heavenly Father. I pray for the facilitator, O Heavenly Father, that you would learn her with more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and clear speech. I pray, O Heavenly Father, that we will have an itching ear, O Heavenly Father, to hear what thus says the Lord. These and other blessings we ask in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if it be of tomorrow, we pray, O Heavenly Father, that we will wake up and with praise on our lips. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for uh, sharing in prayer with us. So I want to uh, say happy Palm Sunday again. And this is our lesson uh, uh, concerning uh, the prophet Elijah. And this unit is our last unit in this um uh, session for faithful prophets. And so we'll be talking about Elijah, and that's the last of the faithful prophets, prophets in his unit. But you were going to a new unit, we'll be talking about prophets and 
Profits and Restoration, April uh, 18th. So this is the last of where we're talking about uh, faithful profits, and then you'll go into uh, another session of profits, but profits of restoration. I want to make sure uh, you all have that. Um, so, but this is a prophet of courage, you know. So we'll be talking about Elijah, and a lot of times people get Elijah, I say Elijah, Elisha, sometimes we get mixed up with his predecessor, who's Elijah. But this is Elijah, the prophet Elijah. This is our agenda. Um, did the welcome already in open prayer. Our lesson aim, and we'll have an in focus video and we'll just have some discussion. Uh, we have a memory verse to go over, our, our lesson discussion. So, life application, you know, we want to always apply these truths to our lives so we bring transformation. Uh, uh, salvation, a call to invitation to Christ. And then we have our announcements, our prayer requests, and our own pastor will do the reflections. Okay, so we just want to, I want you to participate, but be mindful, we do have, we have a time limit, and so we want to get to the scriptures, which is the most important part of why we're meeting, so we can apply the word of God to our lives. Okay, so let's, uh, I got some, some, you all may know some of these already, or may, may not, but I just want, when it comes up in scripture, you want to, come up in our reading, rather, you want to just make sure, in scripture, you want to make sure we just kind of know what they're talking about in, in this time. Um, because the, the writings of the Bible is written in Greek and Hebrew, so in English is different. So, uh, carry thee wither, then just means simply carry them away. Uh, feel with the Lord, it's not a scary thing, but it's a respect and a reverence for to obey God and his words and obey the Lord. Uh, Lord of hosts, you'll hear something like that in your reading if you read further into our lessons. Uh, Lord of the hosts, it said that uh, secluded is hidden. A uh, drought, lack of rain, adherence, followers, uh, whisking him away. Christ actually, uh, Jesus whisked him away. You know, Lord God whisked him away later on in, in, in Kings, carrying him away. That's what it touched, but it's Elijah's hometown. Uh, Baal, some say Baal, but it's Baal. Uh, he's a male god of in, uh, fertility. Uh, his title was Prince, Lord of the Earth. He was also called the Lord of Rain and Dew because he said when they dance and do all these, these, these crazy things to this false god that they were saying that they rain uh, for crops. Uh, the two forms of moisture, of course, rain is that uh, were indispensable for fertility soil in Canaan. So um, I want to just kind of mention those as we go along. Um, we'll do the next slide. Okay. Let's... let's Let's listen to the In Focus video. When Chris fled her abusive husband, she vowed never to depend on another human. She packed her bags and drove across the country to a new job in a strange new town. She worked hard, and at the end of the day, she would sit down with a cup of tea and a book. She went to church, but the closest she ever got to anyone was Mandy, a single mother living in the same apartment complex. She would nod at Mandy as they passed each other in the halls and quickly turn away with a polite little cough. As the weeks went by, the polite cough became serious, and a throbbing pain settled in her chest. The violence she suffered had taken a toll. A series of contradictory doctors discouraged her, and slowly her apartment and solitary life started falling into disarray. Mandy met her one day as she was catching her breath on the stairs. Hey, Chris, want a hand with those groceries? No, thanks. Actually, yes, that would be great. She accepted Mandy's help, but hesitated a bit to let her into the chaos her apartment had become. Chris rested on the couch, and Mandy cooked dinner for them. I see where you're coming from, said Mandy, after hearing Chris's story. But shutting yourself off from people isn't the best way to go. God made us to be part of a community, and that means sharing your struggles with other people and listening to their advice. Chris nodded. I can see that now. I thought I'd be safer by myself, but it looks like that wasn't meant to be. Whom could you reach out to for advice and help? Who can you uh, reach out when, you know, see Chris and Mandy's situation? Who can you reach out uh, for advice and help? Need it. I, I think you all are on mute. Family, mute. family. Fam yeah, family. Family. Your brothers and sisters in Christ. Your brothers and sisters in Christ. Pastor, friends. Pastor, friends. Yeah. Definitely pray to God. 
Pray to God. You said pray to God, to God, reach out to God. Okay, to yeah. Jesus. Have a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> Tell them all about your trouble, right? Hello. Yeah. Uh, Lillian. Yes. I, I thought of that. I thought of uh, just mature Christian other believers. Mandy was a believer. Chris needed some help and didn't want it because she was hurt. So people are reluctant to take help when they already experienced some different things. So you definitely want to um, pray about even seeking advice and who did, you know, wise counsel. So the Bible tells us to seek out wise counsel. So definitely. It's going to move on. Yeah. Okay. This is our keep in mind memory verse. Uh, the King James Version says, and he answered, and I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and that ye have forsaken the commands of the Lord, and thou hast followed Baal. This is Elijah uh, talking to Ahab. This is our memory verse. And so I want to keep in mind, and I want to do the, the new uh, language translation. I have made no trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. You and your family are the ones, oh. he says, are the troublemakers. For you have refused to obey the commands of the Lord and have worshipped the image of Baal instead. And so you got we got to look at this is a three-year, three-and-a-half-year drought that he's speaking of with Elijah. And we'll get into some of it later. And so this is Ahab telling him that he, you know, he's the one that troubled Israel. is a drought. It's been the last three-and-a-half years already. Uh, things are... Uh, animals are dying, things are, are drying up, and so it's interesting that he tells him that, no, you're the one. Elijah speaks up and said, no, it, you're the one. And so, uh, they walked away from the commands of God and worshiping Baal, a false god. So it sounds like a fight for him to go down, right? <laughs> let's, 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 let's go to the next, uh, we'll go to the next slide. This is an overview of Kings. I, I talked a little bit about, a little bit about what's happening with um, Ahab and uh, Elijah. And we have another uh, person in here is uh, Obadiah, you know, a believer. Uh, the book of First and Second uh, Kings are really formed as a single book, uh, which was probably uh, divided because its length required two scrolls. So it was too much to put in one, so they divided it. Uh, the division between the First and Second King is not based on a natural break in the text, it's just a second Kings is a repeat. It just kind of continues the story that happened in first Kings. So it's kind of connected together. Uh, but it deals with the uh, period from 971 BC, the transition from David to Solomon, and then also uh, to 586 BC, the Babylon exile. Uh, first Kings covers about 120 years of this that span. And it started just before Solomon's ascension and ending shortly after Ahab's reign over the Northern Kingdom, 853. I want to throw in here, it's not on the slide, but Solomon actually started um, uh, Israel to worship foreign gods because of his many wives. And so this in entered in early on before the Ahab stuff, but it entered in early on because it already started worshiping foreign, uh, foreign gods with his wives when he, you know, before he went out to sing. So I just want to just kind of throw that in there. Um, so it does cover 120 years of the span, starting with Solomon's ascension and then his end is shortly after Ahab's reign over the northern kingdom in 853 BC. First king testified to God's presence among Israel, but also shows just how far a nation can fall when God is ignored. Uh, first king begins at the end of David's reign and his sons, uh, I don't know how I think I'm saying that wrong, but, and Solomon compete for the throne. Uh, Solomon, of course, is selected, and he builds a temple for God. But after Solomon, the once prosperous nation splits into two kingdoms. Most, uh, most of the kings on both sides fail to follow God and allow idolatry to flourish. Uh, meanwhile, prophets, most uh, noble Elijah, boldly, he boldly comes and calls unfaithful kings to account. He, he, he confronts, uh, confronts them concerning the the word of God and the promise of God and the things that God had, 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 you know, they walked away from God. So he, he brings into account their, their failures and what they were doing, the idolatry in particular. Um, chapter 18, where we are now, uh, the count of Ahab's reign 
is intertwined with the account of Elijah's prophetic activities. You see, uh, if you read the book of First King, you hear about Elijah doing a lot of different things, and there visit a widow woman and and um, and uh, bring somebody back to her son back to life. All kind of different things he's done. The story of Elijah confronting Ahab is here as well. Sets the stage for a contest between Yahweh, the true and living God, and Baal, a false god. Uh, the Canaanites storm uh, storm. That's a, the kind of storm god. Israel worship of Baal is attributed to King Ahab and his wife Jezebel, who instituted uh, Baal worship on a, na a national level. And so, um, so he, but Ahab was considered one of the wickedest kings ever, uh, and really kind of put Israel in a very, very pl bad place with God and worshiping idols. And, and also his wife Jezebel, who was really, really, uh, um, I mean, if, if it's that day, we call her a gun toting chick almost, but she was. <laughs> getting prophets killed and all kinds of things. And so we'll talk more about, um, we, you know, we'll go, as we go further on, we'll, we'll, we'll see what else happens here. Um, we can change. We have a, uh, um, I have a, uh, we're gonna do some tag team in here. So uh, doing our uh, prep work, our Lita did such a great job on this, on this map and explaining some things I want her to share. So she's gonna tag team with me. On that, so uh, Madam Superintendent, you can uh, step in. <laughs> Glad <laughs> to. I, I uh, she she gave you a lot of background on kings, and I wanted to kind of go a little bit in depth on this map here. This map shows a breakdown of Israel, the ten tribes on the north, and here at the bottom is Judah, which is just two tribes. Which, <clears throat> excuse me which is where the mostly good king came from out of Judah. But Ahab was here in Israel. And as you can see on this, maybe we can or can't. I know a lot of the writing is small. But at the top, I'll start with what the writing says. Queen Jezebel was from a place called Tyre. Tyre is up here in this Phoenician territory. They called them Sidonians. And this was up in the north part of the screen. Then the next, but um, just below that, where Elijah was from. Elijah was from the Israel, one of the 10 tribes. I don't know if you guys can see it all on the side, but there, uh, the Phoenicians, the Canaanites were in here. The Philistines were in here. Um, you have the Ammonites. All of them are all around this territory. But Elijah was born right here in a place called Tishbe, uh, and it's also known today as Hazar. Uh, Prophet Elijah, here's an arrow that shows where Mount Carmel was when he went and called out the false, false prophet. Um, then just below that, we have where King Ahab is from. King Ahab was from this place called Samaria. You've heard of that a lot in the Bible, but they actually is where that actually is where the capital of the northern kingdom Israel was. It was in Samaria. It originally was in a place called Tizar, which is just to the left of that. But this one king who battled Ahab's daddy burned down that that king, that, that castle where the uh, palace was. And that's why they ended up moving to Samaria. And one last thing I wanted to point out was that the prophet Elijah, when the drought came, he had to go and run from Jezebel and Ahab. And he leaves this area here and goes all the way up to the area where Jezebel was from. That's where this woman who had the oil and her son and he, she was going to die. She was up here in just above where Tyre was. It's a place called Zarathus. So that was all I wanted to show on this map that Elijah had a lot of tough territory to keep. and to run from King Ahab. He runs all the way up into enemy territory. So mm. King wouldn't find. 
That's it. Thank you so much, Ms. Kelly. Man, say you got it. See that tag team say we could say it works. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so let's uh we're gonna do the people, places, and things. Um just to uh just to kind of pinpoint some of these things um that's going on in our in our lesson. Uh Obadiah found in First King. Uh, some scholars believe this is not the prophet and author of the book Obadiah. Now, uh, during my research, there's 13 Obadiahs in the Old Testament. You know, one uh, actually prophesied uh, to uh, the Edomites, the uh, Edom, and then uh, one was, uh, was the, one's the second chronicles. I wrote them down. Let me see where I put it. And so one was a king, uh, was official with jo Josiah. So so he actually, these actually, um, this name means uh, worship of Yahweh. And so scholars don't believe this is the same Obadiah from the book, but, but who knows if, you know, um, because he's just some of the same administrative things. And so um, just wanted to give you some, just 13 of them, but Second Chronicles has one Obadiah in there. Let's talk about he was, um, uh, uh, gave the law to the cities of Judah. And so, and then another one was a priest in Nehemiah. So just want to let you know that that name is really uh, familiar in the, the scriptures. Uh, this Obadiah, uh, this particular one worked in King Ahab's administration and was like a governor, a mayor, and one of the top officials. Uh, Obadiah held this high position assisting uh, one of Israel's most uh, disobedient kings, it's, it's Ahab. Uh, however, Obadiah maintained his belief in Jehovah the true and living God. I found that interesting that uh, Jezebel is super, it seems like super wicked and then her husband wicked. And yet he's able to maintain his faith and belief among all this and worshiping the true and living God. So that's interesting to know um, that he, even in, though in the midst of what everybody's doing wrong, you yet hold fast and stand fast with, with your conviction uh, and, and faith in God. That's amazing. Uh, the scripture identify him as a worshiper one who feared God greatly. And you'll see some of the things that he had done. He'll, he'll talk to Ahab about some things that he had done to help. Uh, and just not talking about being a, a believer, but he did something. You know, we'll, we'll find out later. Scholars disagree concerning Obadiah's character, though. Uh, some call him a hero, while others criticize his timidity, saying he compromised and was afraid to speak out on God's behalf. So it's so... Some scholars say they don't, they don't consider him as a hero because, um, let's see what the next slide, people have a question here. Um, uh, this, before, we, before we move to that slide, I want to just talk about this. I mean, thinking that he was a hero, what do you think? I mean, in the midst of, I want to just, before I go to Elijah, um, what do you think? Thank you. They disagree that, I mean, he's, he's a believer. He's among wicked uh, uh, king and queen. He works for them. And then yet, uh, you know, do you think he's a hero? Maybe he's a hero or, or not, you know, during that time. This, you know, anyone, one person can just answer. What do you think? I'm thinking that he's not a hero. And I, and I, if I compare this to uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know, okay. when they were thrown in fiery furnace and they wanted them to denounce God. And through all that they went through, they still stay us. Uh, they stood their ground. So I look at them more of being, you know, the boldness that I believe in God and not backing down. So I won't say he was, I don't think he's a hero. I think it's okay. admirable that he still believed through all that he was going through. But the hero, I wouldn't classify him as that. Okay, so you give it to scholars. So he should have stood up and that would have made him a hero, huh? Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. I think yeah, he's I, typical. He's, he's typical. I think he's, he's typical. typical. He's typical, dip, typical with, with what, what we see, uh, some a secret Christian or something. Okay, that's, that, that's, let's, let's move, let's move on. So definitely have some more discussion around the comparison of him, uh, Ola Dow, and then also Elijah. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Then it is Elijah, the prophet Elijah. Uh, little is known about Elijah's birth or family, uh, but other than that, he came from Tishbat. I think we talked about that, and at least it showed on the map. And Gilead, uh, God called Elijah to prophesy. We talked about uh, prophecy and pro uh, prophecies and prophets and 
They have it has to come to pass what they say in order for the qualify to be a prophet. And it has to come to pass exactly how they say. So and so we talked about that other lessons. Um, uh, speaking out against Baal worship in Israel, some he did, and to actually take part and ending the abomination among God's people. Initially, God kept him uh, secluded near the brook of Shurath, where he was uh, fed by ravens for six months. And then uh, as the drought uh, progressed, uh, God connected him with a widow and her son. Uh, God uh, miraculously, miraculously provided food for them for the next three years. This, this drought said last three and a half years. Um, six months he's with, you know, in, in, in hiding and, and God was taking care of him through ravens, feed him day and night, but then also with the widow woman. Uh, just before the end of the drought, Elijah called out the prophets of Baal but, uh, for a showdown on Mount Carmel. Um, he challenged the people of Israel to serve the winner of the contest and um, God uh, victoriously proves his, his superiority over Baal and the prophets of the false gods, and they were destroyed. I wanted to uh, talk about a little bit about, even with the showdown, he called Israel, and we've seen in scripture too, he called Israel, he tell Ahab to bring uh, 450 prophets, and then the other prophet, 450, that sits at Jezebel's table, but he also calls Israel to come and see too, and so it's interesting that he would bring Israel uh, and let them stand around, and also, and then you'll see that he asks Israel, you know, how long are you going to dance between these two opinions? You know, if Baal be God, then serve him. But if God be God, you know, Yahweh, then serve him, and they say nothing. So we'll, we'll get into scriptures that. So it's interesting that um, this happens, and uh, he's not afraid, and, and he's, he has, he's, he's courageous. Even times that it showed that uh, Elijah was hiding, and then in times of fear, I feel like as Christians, that because we 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 you know we we're fearful doesn't mean that we don't have courage. It will we'll, sometimes it's, it, it it can happen like that doesn't mean we won't stand up. And he did that during this time. Let's look at Ahab. Ahab, uh, one of the most rebellious kings in Israel's history, uh, and he married a woman just as wicked as he is, uh, a Baal worshiper who hated God's people so much so she wanted them to she wanted to dethrone God, you know, and have Baal as the one as the uh, false god representing representing all the people in the nations all all of them to, should should bow and, and and worship him so it's interesting how wicked she was she encouraged uh his worship of the false gods of baal and asura that's another uh uh false god uh they don't even show up the, those prophets don't even show up to the battle actually only uh, the for prophets the prophets only show up to the battle only the, those who served uh, pro prophesied with Baal kind of worshipers showed up. But God sent the prophets Elijah and Elisha to warn him. Now you see Elijah here. Uh, but his, he, he refused to listen. So he sent prophet after prophet to warn the king. And when God is ignored, then then, then this is what happens. He, uh, he's, his ultimate downfall came when he made an agreement with a foreign king he was supposed to kill. And did not and did not when his wife had an instant Israelite murder for some land or something here. But uh, Ahab and Jezebel died through some tragic death. She was thrown from a window and was never buried where the dogs ate her. And then um, Ahab was uh, killed in a battle where a spear hit in his heart and it just bled out. So it just goes to show you it was it was tragic. It was devastating. But um, most people like okay, God's. Uh, actually, Elijah had already prophesied this would happen, and so it did. That's uh, I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking. I want you guys to talk a little bit, some too. So let's uh, Hello. The statement this is Cookie. Yes, Hello. we I talked about you. Elijah. Can you hear me? Yes, we talked about Elijah running and hiding, but then we say that Obadiah may not be a hero. Because he was afraid to go to the crazy king that would have killed him, I think, even from coming. And then to go to the king and say, I've seen Elijah. And he could have been hiding him somewhere. Or the king could have thought that way. So I think he was a hero. Okay. Okay. Uh-oh. Am I still? Okay. Oh. No, you're not mute. But we hear you. So, Okay. And and so and, and that's what that's the comparison and and it de it depends on um 
how you look at it. I, I mean, and for me, I mean, you got, think about Elijah though. Elijah was led by God every step of the way in prayer. The, the drought, asking for rain, asking for him to hold the rain back, then going to see a hiding, then coming out and present himself. So God hid him during a certain time and then told him, now present yourself to Ahab. So we're at this, these type of verses. Now he's about to present himself to Ahab had been looking for him. So we're going to look at that in scripture. Any more comments? We got a question mm -hmm. too. Thank you. Uh, uh, there's no right or wrong answer. It's, 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 we, we're, we're learning together. Um, how, do, how, how does God protect his followers when leaders are unjust? Uh, let me say something. Uh, yes. Whenever yes. somebody is, is uh, talking, you pop up on my screen and I may mute you because you're interfering with the speaker. So some, some of you, you might notice you're getting muted, but it's only because your background is interfering with the speaker and you pop up since uh, I'm looking at the screen and I can see who's doing it. So, okay. Okay, okay thank you. So mm -hmm. let's talk some more about that. How does God protect his followers when leaders are unjust? This, this speaks to Obadiah. Uh, okay, think about, think about if Jezebel, well, it's going to talk about in the scripture that he goes and feed 100 uh, prophets. He had 50 each in a cave and he feeds them water and uh, water and also um, bread. And if Ahab had a found out, you think he would let Obadiah live? Mm -hmm. This is, it, it, no. And so, so that's the thing. So it's how we look at it. You know, it's times that and he couldn't have been. Of course, he's led by God to do this. And so, you know, we got to look at, is he a hero or is he not? Is it times that, how does God protect his followers when leaders are unjust? Do, you know, and he does. So he protected um, Elijah. He, Elijah hides, but then he had to present himself. Because uh, even Elijah says, all the prophets are dead. They, they're gone. And that that's not true. God had to tell me some more. <laughs> he he didn't, hadn't, hadn't actually um, worshipped him. It's, 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 he had more. But I want to, this is a question for the group. No responses? Oh, I think they, they're me. Okay. I have a comment. I think if we even just apply it to today, I didn't see um, Trump as being a just president. He's a leader. But God protected uh, some of the people who were his, who were, God's followers by allowing them, because I, I think about that situation with Trump and him going after Biden and Biden's son. So far, everything has been good because we know that things happen politically and they can harm us overall in our regular lives. So I, I just think that we should think about leaders who are doing the wrong things and how God is helping us to make it through until it's time for that battle. Like in this instance, when they went up against the false prophets and whose altar was finally, um, I, I don't even know how to explain it, how the altar was actually turned to a sacrifice. Yeah, yes, thank you. Any, anyone else? And I guess he protects us by giving us patience to wait until the situation is worked out, even if it is unjust. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Definitely, definitely. He, he definitely he, he takes care of his own, and he shows that in, in the case of Elijah. Uh, we're going to go to the next slide. I think we have the scriptures now. I, want, I wanted us to, this, this is a um, video of just some of the, uh, hideous acts and things that um, this worship of Baal uh, require of, of, the, of those who worship them. So, I mean, the people worship Baal. They did all sorts of evil things. And so this is just a video to show you some of the activities around this, this cult and, and what they have, they have done. So we're going to play the video for you. The book of First Kings states that the Israelites picked a guy named Omri to be their king and that he did more evil than all the kings that came before him. After Omri, his son Ahab becomes king of Israel. Ahab married a Phoenician princess named Jezebel, and they participated in the fertility cults of Baal and Asherah. 
By the time of Ahab and Jezebel, the fertility cults appeared to already have the official sanction of Israel's leaders, and Ahab, with his wife's encouragement, built a temple to Baal at his capital in Samaria. The earliest deity recognized by the peoples of the ancient Near East was the creator god El. His mistress, the fertility goddess Asherah, gave birth to many gods, including a powerful god named Baal, or Lord. There appears to have been only one Baal, who was manifested in lesser Baals at different places and times. Over the years, Baal became the dominant deity, and the worship of El faded. Baal won his dominance by defeating the other deities, including the god of the sea, the god of storms, also of rain, thunder, and lightning, and the god of death. Baal's victory over death was thought to be repeated each year when he returned from the land of death the underworld, bringing rain to renew the earth's fertility. Hebrew culture viewed the sea as evil and destructive, so Baal's promise to prevent storms and control the sea, as well as his ability to produce abundant harvests, made him attractive to the Israelites. Baal is portrayed as a man with the head and horns of a bull, an image similar to that in biblical accounts. His right hand, sometimes both hands, is raised and he holds a lightning bolt, signifying both destruction and fertility. Baal has also been portrayed seated on a throne, possibly as the king or lord of the gods. Asherah was honored as the fertility goddess in various forms and with varying names. She is portrayed as a nude female, sometimes pregnant, with exaggerated breasts that she holds out, apparently as symbols of the fertility she promises to her followers. The Bible indicates that she was worshipped near trees and poles called Asherah poles. Baal's worshippers appeased him by offering sacrifices, usually animals such as sheep or bulls. At times of crisis, Baal's followers sacrificed their children, apparently the firstborn of the community, to gain personal prosperity. The Bible called this practice detestable. God specifically appointed the tribe of Levi as his special servants in place of the firstborn of the Israelites, so they had no excuse for offering their children. The Bible's repeated condemnation of child sacrifice shows God's hatred of it, especially among his people. Asherah was worshipped in various ways, including through ritual sex. Although she was believed to be Baal's mother, she was also his mistress. Pagans practiced sympathetic magic, that is, they believed that they could influence the gods' actions by performing the behavior they wished the gods to demonstrate. Believing the sexual union of Baal and Asherah produced fertility, their worshippers engaged in sex to cause the gods to join together, ensuring good harvests. This practice became the basis for religious prostitution. The priest, or a male member of the community, represented Baal. The priestess, or female members of the community, represented Asherah. Now many, if not all, of the Old Testament gods had disappeared, at least in name, by the time of Jesus. Beelzebub, based on the Philistine god Baalzebul, had become a synonym for the prince of demons, Satan. Many of the ancient pagan deities lived on, however, now identified with the gods of the Greeks and Romans, the nations who controlled the people of Israel before and during New Testament times. The God of Israel had always condemned child sacrifice and the worship of other deities. In one passage he says, I did not command you to do this, nor did it even enter my mind. Now, it's in the setting of these Baal cults that Elijah comes on the scene, one of Israel's greatest prophets. So we'll go to the next slide. Just want you to see some of the things they would do. So lesson, just some of the lesson background. Uh, God's law clearly command never to worship false gods, not to invoke them, their names, not to marry their adherents, which is you know, their descendants, Jezebel, for instance, or, their, or practice any of their customs. And so he Ahab violated each of these laws during his uh, 22 reign in Israel. Uh, he married Jezebel, a Phoenician Baal worshiper who had altars and temples built for Baal. Uh, the false gods of uh, rain and dew was the uh, supreme male deity of the ancient Phoenicians and Canaanites. And you all remember the Canaanites. Uh, you hear them a lot in, in, in the word of God. Their rituals uh, included illicit sex, rituals, prostitution, ritual prostitution, and child sacrifice, as you see in the video. Um, uh, God's prophet Elijah confronted King Ahab concerning this. Uh, the first uh, time scripture mentions him is appears before King Ahab announcing a drought to come upon the whole land and the cause of the nation's sin. This, uh, this one was verbally threatened by a lone prophet of God challenged the worship of Baal and who was supposed to control the rain. Uh, instead of Ahab and Jezebel acknowledging God and repenting, 
they were furious. Uh, they desperately sent uh, out soldiers to uh, hunt down Elijah uh, to force him to reverse this curse. And so um, it's interesting that they, the God of Baal supposed to be able to give rain and do and stuff like that. So uh, they actually felt like if they catch, uh, it, it catch him, then he'll start back to rain because their God would, would Baal would have sent them out to, to get him and capture him. Then you know, the rain will come back. So this is just crazy how, how uh, <laughs> they operated in this way, wickedness. Um, let's, um, let's go to the next slide. I want to get to the scriptures. I have three readers uh, today. So we'll um, read the scripture and then we'll just have some more discussion. So uh, God providence, God's servant, and then uh, then the last one was Obadiah, God's prophet Elijah. So uh, Ms. Odessa is going to read uh, God's providence, our scriptures. Okay, uh, King James Version. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land unto all fountains of water and, un and unto the brooks pre-adventure. We may find grass to save the horses and mules alive that we lost not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by, him, by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face and said, Art thou that my Lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am go, I am go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. Thank you. And so we see in our text that um, Ahab and Odell goes out, and that it's so desperate that he will go out as a king to look for uh, water. But, but it's, interesting in, um, it's interesting in that particular, those picture of passage, before you, uh, we'll talk a little about the, Ones that went before before we do this one, we'll talk about a little bit about the ones that the scripture got about that. five minutes. Uh, yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So let's let's let let's move to the next scriptures. Let's move to the next scriptures. Now, just share. Let's, let's, go ahead. Go ahead. Move to the next and, scriptures. We'll get them all in. Okay. And he said, "What have I sinned that thou?" would have delivered thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay, slay me. As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord has not sent to seek thee. And when they said, he is not there, he took an oath of kingdom, of the kingdom and nation that they found thee the not. And now thou sayest, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it, has, it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid an hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in, in a cave and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Thank you. 
the last scriptures. Darius, Darius, unmute yourself. <laughs> Got it. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Thank you. During this time, you, you think that he would be, this is his opportunity to repent, but he blames. And so that tells you how weak and how far he is from, from, from God or even trying to repent. So now Elijah says, let's, let's, let's go ahead and do the showdown because of this. So, and um, I don't know how many minutes we have, probably how many minutes, but it goes to show you how weak he is. It was, he, was, he was doing this to drive him to, this is our recap, to drive him to repent. So um, when we compare Elijah's response to speak to Ahab to, to that of Obadiah's uh, response to report back to Ahab, uh, hopefully we gain a sense of Obadiah's concern when reporting Elijah's message to Ahab, uh, concerned that he was, he was fearful that he's going to kill me. So, so Elijah does go. And we need to start acting in boldness because Elijah acted in boldness regardless of, of, of uh, Ahab and how he uh, killed prophets. And so he wasn't afraid. And so in the boldness when speaking to God's word, we need to be bold. Uh, uh, we can tell that that uh, Odell was a believer, but bold he was not You know, in the end of our lesson, okay? So we need to stand up for the things of God and confront uh, the things that we know God is leading us to do and say to leaders or say to people or even supervisors sometime on your job, you might have to confront. So I just wanted to sum it up with, with that. And I don't know if we uh, looking for my time. Um, I must have a few minutes. How have you pushed back against God instead of acknowledging him and repenting? And this is similar to our story and, and even Ahab. Instead of repenting, pushing back. Anybody want to answer? Okay. Uh, Reverend Pat, can I make a comment? Yeah, yes, please. And I, I'm not answering this question. I know, no, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. But um, the, the lesson points out that throughout the history of, of people, bad leaders will always come about. Mm -hmm. What we know as believers is that God's word has been present since the beginning. And yeah. if we rely on his word, it will provide us with refuge, sanctity, and a pathway through the negativity of these bad and, and undesirable leaders. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Definitely for raising that, that insight. Definitely. And so that's my time. No comments <laughs> or anything. I think we... I think we're on Miss Kelly. Uh, I need a, thank you so much, Minister Pat. This was a meaty lesson, a lot of stuff in it, and I enjoyed mm -hmm. the lesson immensely. Uh, thank you. Uh, Chris, you're unmuted. I turn it over to you. This is um, uh, a great lesson. And it gives us a, to reflect. And perhaps someone may be um, at a showdown of their own. And the choice is open. Do you choose God or do we choose life as we have been living it? Our lesson teaches us that God has help for us. And this is the time that if you're listening, uh, that you can join in fellowship with us and the fellowship with God. And the way to do that is um, just to repent and ask God for forgiveness. 
we have scriptures that, um, that cover that. And our scriptures are in Romans. Romans 10 says, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3 and 23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5 and 8, but God commanded his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 23 says that for the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 9 and 10 says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth thy Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13 says, For who, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If this is your desire, we um, just ask that you repeat the sinner's prayer and put your name in the chat box. There are other ways uh, if uh, to join our fellowship. You can join our fellowship under Watch Care. Um, if you're not connected with your uh, church, we will cover you. Um, you can join our fellowship through Christian experience. If you've been baptized, water baptized by a Bible-believing church, we'll take you in and um, give you proper instruction, and you will be in fellowship with us. And as stated, candidate for baptism. Um, and the sentence prayer states, um, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I believe that you are the Son of God. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And by this confession, I accept my own salvation, rich, full, and complete. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, if anybody is inclined, again, put your name in the chat box. Um, prayer request, same, put your prayer request in the chat box. Last week, I did not get all of them in because I didn't record the session. So therefore, it didn't record any of the names. I turned the recording off. So uh, those who I might have missed, I apologize for anybody that I didn't turn over the names on last week. So um, that being said, I have Nothing else to uh, talk about other than next uh, Sunday is Easter Sunday. And I'll have a different background because today is Palm Sunday. <laughs> Thank the Lord for his triumphal entry. Uh, Pastor Nelson. Good morning. As you can see, I have my palm on. I've been out preaching this morning. Pastor Kelly had surgery this week, and so I had to go take care of Pathway, Wounded Healers, Church Baptists, and just get back in. So thank you. Listen, it's been it's been a week. Uh, got a call from Dot the other day that uh, Linda Tate's son uh, has passed away. So reached out to that family. On uh, last night, Loretta Treadwell's mother. Uh, had some complications and they rushed her to the hospital, but she is home. And so we're praising God for that. Keep Loretta in your prayer. Keep Linda in your prayer. Keep all of the members of Great Open Door Church in your prayers as we go through this uh, season. Uh, listen, normally revival would start on tomorrow. And, and so since we can't do that, I I'm grateful to God that uh, these vehicles are, are available for us this afternoon after Junior Church uh, at 2.30. Perfecting the Saints will take place. And so you got time to visit with that and be involved in that. Then at 5 o'clock on uh, Spirit Redeem, uh, revival starts at Spirit Redeem. So go to Spirit Redeem Baptist Church uh, or Daniel Garrett Ministries and you can pick that up. And then night, uh, starting Monday night at 7 o'clock through Friday, uh, there will be a preacher preaching one of the seven last words. Uh, Reverend Gregory uh, 
Reverend Lawrence Gregory Fryer will be preaching. I forgot what night, uh, but that way you got to watch every night so you can catch it. Uh, 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 listen, let me thank our our uh, tech group, our communications committee, what else can I call them? Those that oversee all of the information that we need to keep us going. I'm preaching at Friendship uh, Seven Last Words on Friday as usual. That's a virtual experience. And so sometime between uh, today and tomorrow, uh, you should get a flyer or all of the information with all of the events leading up to Resurrection Sunday. And then Resurrection Sunday, there will be just one service, uh, uh, not a six o'clock service, uh, but just the, the regular service. And then at five o'clock, because that will be first Sunday, you get to hear the new preacher that has joined our fellowship. The Reverend uh, Dwight Easton will be preaching the Lord's Supper Easter Sunday at five o'clock on our, on our uh, network of churches. And so... We, we're still involved in Holy Week. We still got a lot to be thankful and grateful for. And this is the day that we shout Hosanna, for truly the Lord did come into Jerusalem, not as a conquering king, but as the Prince of Peace to die for the sins of the world. And so we thank you so much for all of your prayers and participation. Okay, Miss Alita. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate that. Today, I've been married, we've been married 46 years. <laughs> I thank the Lord Happy for anniversary. allowing me to spend 46 years with the love of my life. <laughs> thank you've been, you, you've been, Alita, you've been married 46 years. Bob been married about 56 years because it's been hard on him. <laughs> That's the truth. I know you did. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> she rhymed with me. <laughs> I thank you, everybody. Somebody, uh, where are the Bible study recordings? That, that I, if you want them, I can provide them uh, for the Sunday school. I used to post them, but it takes a long time. So if you want a copy of today's lesson or any of the other lessons outside of last week, then uh, just let me know and I can send you a link to it. Um, but it, it, I have to clean them up a little bit. So that's why they don't get out like they used to. But I might start putting them back out. Okay, next Sunday, Easter Sunday, sacrificing is over. <laughs> <Happy anniversary. laughs> I'll see everybody next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.